Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. My name is Estelle, otherwise known as Comsign Geek. I'm a computing teacher and I also develop resources for the programme. We specialise in delivering computing workshops that are accessible, educational and fun. You're watching part two of our Scratch Stories workshop. This part of the workshop requires a PC or laptop and we recommend that you've completed part one before starting part two. But don't worry if you missed it, you can catch any of our previously streamed workshops on our YouTube channel. Just search YouTube for Digital Schoolhouse. And don't forget part one of all of our workshops is unplugged, meaning you don't need any tech to take part, just a device to watch the video on. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts, or take part in the workshop alongside me. The Digital Schoolhouse team are ready and waiting in the chat should you have any questions throughout. I will also be taking five minutes at the end of the stream to answer your questions. Parents and guardians, you might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources, but after that, feel free to join in or sit nearby to supervise if you want to. Let's get started. Okay, so as usual, we are going to start by going through where you'll find our resources because that of, of course is really important if you're following along this video at home. So if you want to access our resources, you need to head over to our website, which is digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. Just wait for the page to load. Um, you will then need to go to the resources section. Sorry, my internet is very slow today. So internet, uh, go to the resources section, click on live workshops. And you'll need to go to the Scratch Stories section and click on Scratch, uh, Scratch Stories, the link there. And this is where I find, you'll find a copy of the worksheet. So these are the worksheets that we used in the last part, in part one. So if you have missed part one, um, you can see what you'll need to be doing for that. So there's various different storyboards for planning your story. Um, and then what you're going to need for today's session is the evaluation, which is the very last sheet of the set of resources for Scratch Stories. Um, I'll quickly show you as well what they look like um, filled in, so you have an idea of what you should have ready to start with for today's session. So I'll just jump over onto the visualizer. Um, you can see I've got my background screen planning just here. So this is um, filled in. Obviously yours is going to look slightly different depending on what your story is about. Um, I've got my storyboard, which I've planned all the different parts of the story. I've got my character planning and I've got my paint editor planning and I've got my speech planning. And I've also got my blank, my blank um, evaluation uh, sheet that I showed you earlier. So those are the sheets that you're going to need for today's session. Um, the other thing that you uh, might want to have is a copy of the story that you're using. So I'm going to be doing a section from Oliver Twist. So I've got a printout of the story that I'm using for uh, helping me with my uh, with the um, speech planning for what I'm going to be telling you in the story. So that is what you're going to need to uh, make sure you've got together. Okay, so I'm just going to jump over onto um, the desktop so you can see what I'm doing next. And you will need to go onto the Scratch website. Now, the Scratch website is scratch.mit.edu. You can also just search for Scratch. Whoops, spelled, help. <laughs> spelled correctly helps. Um, you can search for Scratch and you should find it's the very first result that comes up. Um, on the, your Google search, so there is Scratch. Um, once you're in Scratch, you will need to go to, wait for it to load. As you can see, my internet's a little on the slow side today, so apologies for that. Once you go to, once it's loaded, just click on Create, and that will load a new blank project for you to work in. Okay, so that's what you're going to need to be using for today's session. Okay, I'm going to jump over into the presentation and talk you through what you're going to be learning today and then we'll hit the ground running and start with what our um, workshop. Okie dokie. So today's workshop is Scratch Stories and this is going to be um, all about you telling a story with a twist. 
Um, the challenge in this workshop is to learn how to add and create your own sprites, learn how to create animated sprites, create um, and add sound effects. And you're also going to learn how to use if statements to control how your sprites interact with each other. And you're going to use questions to collect input from the reader of your story. So that's what we're going to be doing today. OK, so the, the next thing we're going to look at is how we are going to be building our skills. Um, so we're going to be building our skills by um, using Scratch. So we're going to be learning some various skills about using different types of loop and if statement as we go through our story. Um, we're also going to be, um, first of all, doing this scene by scene. So the very first thing we're going to do is produce the sprites and backgrounds for the scenes that we're going to be using. And we're going to be creating a simple version of our story where the user moves from start to finish. And then we're going to be testing our story um, to share and test it with our peers. OK, so let's have a go at doing that now. So I'm going to just hop into Scratch. Just pop the transition on so you can see. Um, and I will then be starting to build those various parts of the project. OK, so if I jump back onto desktop so you can see what I'm doing, there you go. So the very first thing you need to do is start to, to create the backgrounds and the various sprites that we're going to need to be using. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that you can see here and we'll be using in this um, particular workshop, we've got this code area. So we've got all the different blocks and you can see they're categorised under different names. The actual code area is in the middle of the screen and on the right hand side you can see this area is the stage and underneath you've got the thumbnails of all the different sprites that you're going to be adding and in the bottom right hand corner you've got the backdrops which are the backgrounds for using in your project. If I jump over onto the visualizer to show you what we're going to be doing first. So the first thing I'm going to do is do my character planning and I'm going to create three sprites Oliver, Dodger and Charles Dickens who's going to be my narrator in my story. So that's what I'm going to start with uh, first of all. So I'm going, I'm going to delete the scratch cat because we don't need him at all. So we're going to just press the delete on him and get rid of him. And then we're going to do um, paint a new sprite. So you need to go to the little cat, which is um, choose a sprite and go and hover over the paintbrush. Click on that. And then you're going to go to where it says costumes. And that's where you're going to be designing a new sprite. So I'm going to get the paintbrush again. And I'm going to change the colour to black because I want to do an outline. So this, um, the way that Scratch works for changing the colours is a little bit different to the original version of Scratch. Um, this controls the brightness. This controls the saturation. So if you want to make it um, lighter, you go that way. If you want to make it more of a vibrant colour, you go to the to the right. Um, for brightness, if you want to make it darker, you go towards the left hand side. And as change the colour, you just change the colour at the top. Um, so it's a little bit different to what we've used previously um, and in some ways it's a little bit trickier so you might have to play around with it but don't be afraid just to play around until you get the colour that you're wanting. So I'm going to get black. I'll just do that by going down to the bottom of the brightness. There we go. Okay and then I'm going to start drawing my character. So my first character is Oliver of course. So I'm going to draw um, my character for Oliver and he's going to, there he is, so he's going to have a, a cap. and then I need to do his hair and you can see that it will start to put the design onto your stage. Don't worry if it's not in the quite the right place or if it's a bit too big because we'll resize it as we go along so that's fine. And give him an ear. I didn't give him any ears last time when I first drew him if you remember from part one. So he, he now has ears. <laughs> um, and let's give him his other ear. Don't worry if you make a mistake. Um, if you try to do it in little steps, that way if you make a mistake, you can um, always undo it like that. I've just made his neck, his um, chin very wide, so I'm gonna undo that by just clicking on the undo button. There we go, and I can just redraw it again. So don't be afraid if it doesn't, doesn't go quite to plan. You can always undo and have a second go. Okay, there is my Oliver face. Um, I need to give him a nose, so let's give him a little, nose like that and he needs some eyes there we go and a little smiley oh no we gave I had a smiley face originally didn't I but then I changed my mind because actually he's meant to be quite sad at this moment in the story so I'm actually going to give him a sad face there you go and some eyebrows okay and we can give him a, a little bit of clothes um, just to finish off the design so there's his neck 
and we're going to add in his raggedy clothes because obviously he's um, he's just escaped from the workhouse so he's not going to be wearing his best suit or anything like that and one thing you do need to remember with scratch is you do need to um, like close the shape so what I mean by that is if you have any gaps in the shape because we're going to use the fill tool in a minute if you imagine it's a little bit like a sand castle where you have built all the walls and then you fill fill it with water um, if there's any gaps in the in the outer outer edge the color will like seep through so we don't want that to happen so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color him in so I'm going to use the fill bucket it's just this one here that looks like a paint bucket I'm going to go up here and change the color so remember what I said before is that you'll need to put the brightness back up to find all the different colors and I'm going to go for sort of a brownie colour for his outfit. Um, I think I'm going to go for more like a grey colour for his cap. So let's go and find grey. So this one I need to turn down the saturation to get a grey. There we go. He has blonde hair in my version of the story. Obviously you can change that according to what you want to use. So that's a little bit too green. So I need to go a bit more towards the red side of things. So it's just playing around with it until you get it the right colour. So don't be afraid of experimenting with different things until you get it the colour that you want. There we go. Whoops, I accidentally caught the back the outline, so I just do undo for that. There we go. And I need to give him a skin colour, um, which is going to be sort of a pinky colour. There we go. Oops, why is it not filling in? There we go. Okay, I must have a bit that's not quite joined up, and that's why it's not letting me fill his face in at the moment. So let's quickly do that and see if I can sort that out. Um, this one here is quite useful. It's got a paint dropper, and we use that for selecting the same colour. So what I can do is go and click on the outline and make sure I've got exactly the same colour as I used originally for drawing the face. And I'm just going to make sure that I filled it all in, because I suspect this must be somewhere where it doesn't quite join up, and that'd be why it won't let me colour the face in at the moment so let's try that I'm going to use the paint book dropper again to match the colour that I've used for his skin tone so let's go and put that on here there we go and hopefully no it's still not going to let me colour it in so what I might do is I'm going to do I'm going to um, do this a slightly different way so it actually fills in um, I'm going to add an extra bit over here which I'm going to then hopefully put behind him um, actually now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my mind, I'm going to draw a new outline for his face but I'm just going to put it over the top of the original one just making sure that I have joined all the parts up. I think that will work best. So let's go back in here and let's go back, oops I didn't mean to do that so undo that <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to just make sure that I've got the lines properly drawn around his face it's not going to look quite as good as it originally did unfortunately but hey sometimes things don't quite go to plan there we go so it definitely joins up this time and then i can get my fill and i'm going to use that dropper again to match the color there we go and now that should fill no, it's still not having any of it today. I don't know why it's not doing that. It should work fine. I have no idea. It's one of those things. Sometimes computers don't do what you expect them to do. So what I might have to do is just use a paint brush, just make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to fill it in that way instead, I think. Ah, oh, technology, huh? Hopefully on yours it worked first time. I don't know why it's decided not to fill in on mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the colour to his face and I'm going to have to then add his features back in afterwards because obviously they're going to disappear there we go and I'll pop his features back in now obviously I would spend a bit longer on this to make sure that I don't doesn't look a little bit strange um, and I'd fill in all the bits so it goes right to his ears but I haven't got time to do that so do feel free to spend longer with doing your designs okay and let's pop his eyebrows back in one thing that's quite nice is it just gives me a chance to make sure he'd look sad rather than angry because he did look a little bit angry rather than sad before. 
There we go, that looks better. So there is my Oliver. Now at the moment it's called Sprite One, which isn't a very good name for it because that doesn't describe it at all. So we're gonna change that to the name, which is Oliver. Obviously you've got different characters in your story, so you're gonna be drawing your characters. So the next character that I'm gonna be drawing, if I jump over over onto the visualizer, is gonna be the Artful Dodger. So I'm gonna do him next. So let me do a new sprite. So we do the same things we did before. We go to choose sprite, click on the paintbrush, and we're gonna do the drawing of our second character. So I'm gonna do the same process as before, and I'm gonna draw my character. So obviously the most important thing about Dodger is his top hat, um, because I feel that that's definitely how we all know him from the story. Now don't worry that it will be drawing your second character on top of your first one on the stage over here. Um, that's because we can we can see both of them at the, mo at the same time at the moment, but we'll move them a bit later on. So don't worry if, they, if that makes it look a bit strange. You can see what you're doing by drawing on the actual um, paint editor in front of you. Whoops, went a bit wrong there. So I just undo that, like I said to you earlier, if it goes wrong, just undo it, that's fine. And then we're gonna get the paint bracket and we're gonna add some color. I'm gonna go for a slightly different color um, to the outline for working this bit. So I'm going to take the, uh, let's see, what should we go for? If I take the brightness up and then take the saturation down, that should give me a slightly different color. Yeah, there we go, that looks good. So there is um, the top hat that my Dodger is going to have. I'm gonna go back to the paintbrush tool. I'm gonna to use that paint dropper again to match the color so that I end up with the same color background for the outline of my Dodger character. There we go. And then I'm gonna draw the Artful Dodger underneath the hat. So let's give him, oh, he hasn't changed the color, has it? Let's undo that and change it so it actually has changed. Let's do that, there we go. Make sure I've got the right one this time. There we go, that's better. Right, okay, so now let's do the outline of Dodger's hair. There we go. And we're gonna do some ears. And his face. And a second ear. There we go, and I'm gonna color him in. So let's give him a different, slightly different colored skin tone. And let's go for, let's see what we can find that looks, that looks quite realistic. Cause we don't want it to look a bit odd. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna experiment until we get the color that we want. Let's see. Um, it's a bit too orangey. Let's see if we can make it a better colour. You can see it's quite difficult getting the right colour with this. So just a, just play around with it until you get it the right colour. Yeah, that will do. And then my Dodger hair is going to be sort of dark brown colour, I think. So let's go that way and put the saturation that way. So we should. Oops, we did it again. <laughs> um, Okay, so I've done the same thing again. I need to make the outline work properly. So I think instead of using the fill tool on this one, I'm going to use the brush and draw his hair in using the brush just for a bit of a change. Let's go for that. And then we're just going to add the colour in over the top. Now, obviously, if I'd thought about this a little bit more, I probably would have done his hat after drawing his hair because I've obviously done it in a slightly different way to what I'd originally planned. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw that bottom line of the brim of his hat again so that means it will sit over the top of his hair which will look a little bit better. So I'm going to use that matching um, tool again to match the colour up and I'm going to make the size of the paintbrush the right size and I'm going to just add in that brim there you go, lovely. Okay, so we need to add his uh, his eyebrows and his eyes. Oops, that one went a bit higher than the other. Let's try that one again. See what I mean about just undoing it if it goes wrong? And then pop the nose and then mouth. 
there is my artful dodger and he needs some clothes now in the description that i read out to you last time it talks about him wearing a coat that was oversized like it was a man's coat so i quite like that idea so let's give him a coat that's way too big for him so it's got like a collar like so and it's really too big so it kind of hangs off his shoulders like that and then I'm going to draw a line along the bottom for the same reason as I talked about before so that we can fill it all in without it seeping out the sides and then we're going to add some colour to that um, let's go for let's put the brightness up so we can choose different colours I think quite a nice dark green would work quite well for his coat so different coat colour to what I originally planned that's fine though and I need to get the paint bucket and I'm going to use that just to colour in his coat. Now I can see what the problem is with that. Can you see that it doesn't actually join up there? So I need to get my paintbrush. I'm going to match up the colour matching. And make sure I've got the same colour. There we go. And then we're going to just join up that little bit there. 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 That hopefully will do the trick. And then we're going to use a fill tool. And we're going to do a bit of colour matching again. And there we go. And last but not least, we need to do his neck as well. So we're going to use that colour matching again. So fill. And we're going to colour match his face colour. Whoops. Oh, I've got another one that, that won't colour in. So let's see if I can do that. I might just do this with a, with a paintbrush just to get it done quickly. But you can experiment with getting it pr perfectly. Um, I don't have time to do that. So do experiment if you need a bit longer. Okay, there we go. That will do for my Dodger. And once you've... So that's my two characters. I need to obviously change his name so it says Dodger rather than Sprite 1. And my last character is my narrator. So I've got my narrator over here, my Charles Dickens character. I'm going to add him now. So I'm going to do the same routine as I did for the other ones. I'm going to do a new sprite by clicking on the paintbrush. And I'm going to draw my character. I'm going to just get the black outline again before I do anything. So I go to the fill and I change that to black. That's it, and I'm going to change the paintbrush size so it's down to the 10 for the outline again. And then I'm going to draw my Charles Dickens character. So let's get him drawn. So he's got his kind of slightly mad professor hair that I drew in my original design. So this time I'm going to remember to join everything up properly. So hopefully we shouldn't have as many issues as I did previously. So there's his hair. Next thing we're going to do is his face. So we're going to have ear and a chin. There we go. And he has a moustache. So I'll add that on. This might be another one where it might be easier to do it with a paintbrush afterwards. You can experiment with that. And then he's got a beard. Um, which I think actually that will probably work all right for my beard. So I'll add his eyes. Oops, make that one a bit longer. And eyebrows. And a nose. <laughs> it was a bit wonky, but that's fine. Um, and then I'm going to just do the colours. So he's got um, brown hair in my design. Oops. I'll change the paint bucket. There we go. And moustache and beard. There we go. And we need to colour his face in, which is going to be a sort of skin colour. Let's go for like that. That will do. It's a bit too red, isn't it? Let's go that way. Um, obviously, he's a, he, we know who, who he is, so... We, this is Charles Dickens, so we're trying to make him look a little bit like he looked in real life. And let's add some clothes. And he's got a suit on in my design. Mm 
<laughs> and let's add that to there. So he has what looks like a sort of collared white shirt in my design. There we go. He also has a knotted tie like so there we go and then he has got like a suit jacket that goes down here um so i'm trying to remember to fill all the bits in that need to be colored in different colors there we go and then the other side of his suit jacket right okay so let's add the colors in so if you need to do a white for his shirt so we need to get the right color so we're going right up high with the with the brightness and down with the saturation to get white and we're going to color in the different parts of his shirt there we go and we're going to give him a sort of red colored tie there we go. Lovely. And then we've got a blue um, sort of like a jacket that we're using. There we go. That will do. And blue for the jacket. Okay. So there is my Charles Dickens character. And we need to add that up there. And he is also the narrator in my story. So I'm going to put narrator. There we go. Okay, so now we've got my three characters according to my character planning sheet. Um, the next thing I want to do, so there's my three characters, so Oliver Dodger and Charles Dickens. The next thing we need to do is work on the different backgrounds that we need in the story. And in my version of the story, I'm just using three backgrounds. I've got a, um, if I read, remind myself from the story I wrote out, we've got the Barnet, Barnet doorstep. Which, we're, which is where Oliver is found to start with. We've got the Barnet shop. We've got, and we've got the um, sort of the London scene. So those are the things that we're going to do next. So let's jump over and have a go at doing those in the backdrops next. So for this next section, what you're going to need to do is add backgrounds. So to add backgrounds, you've got this backdrop section over here. So you can see that these will be appearing behind our characters. So if I select the backdrops, you'll see it will change to a, an empty background because that's what we've got at the moment, which is backdrop one. Um, you want, want to rename it so it actually has something meaningful. So my first one, remember, is my doorstep. So I'm going to call it doorstep. And then I'm going to quickly design my back, the background for the doorstep. Um, so I'm going to use shapes for this to make it a little bit quicker. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all the background colour in that um, background I've got of the house here. So I'm going to use something similar to that colour in the background of my design. So I'm going to use a fill tool for that. I'm going to select the colour that roughly matches what I planned. Don't worry, it's not quite the same. It's whatever works for you. And I'm going to fill. Now that's really interesting, isn't it? Look, I can't just fill that because it doesn't work like that scratch. So I actually need to draw a shape that I can then colour in. So in this case, because I've already selected the fill, when I do the shape the size of the background, it will then effectively just fill it in. There you go, you can see it changes over there. Then I'm going to do my windows. Now my windows, I'm going to change the outline colour and I'm going to make it um, that brown colour that we need for the windows. Um, I'm also going to make the outline slightly thicker because then we can do this in one go and design the windows for our um, shop. So let's try 10 for the outline size. Um, you can see it's automatically done it to the one I had selected, but that's fine because you can't see it off the side of the thing. And it means I can check if it's the right size. It needs to be a bit bigger than that. So let's try 20. And I'm gonna change the fill color. And we're gonna make that white because obviously that's what color the windows are gonna be. And then we're gonna add those into the design of the house. So we're going to have windows that kind of appear around about there. And I need to change the outline colour because it's changed it back. And this is where we can use that dropper. And I can select the same colour as I had selected previously. 
there we go and we're going to do a second window over on this side there we go and I'm going to use the paintbrush tool and I'm going to select the same colour as I did over here and I'm just going to add some more detail to the windows it doesn't matter it's a bit wiggly woggly because actually this is Victorian time houses weren't super like symmetrical and straight like they are now so we can have we can get away with it being a bit wobbly <laughs> make it more realistic there we go whoops probably not quite as wobbly as that so let's undo that <laughs> I don't know quite what happened there let's try that again there we go right okay there's my windows next we're going to do the doorway so I'm trying to do it almost like I'm layering things on top of each other in the right order so that it will look right. So I'm going to go for a slightly darker fill colour for the doorway. And then we're going to add the doorway in. Like that. It's almost got like a door frame around it. And then we're going to add the steps. So the steps, I'm going to again choose a lighter colour for these. And I'm going to just add the steps coming up. So I'll start with the bottom one and I'll, I'll build up to the top. So let's go lighter coloured. Whoops, I keep forgetting that it does it automatically, which I don't want it to do. So let's undo that. So we stay with the original. Let's deselect it and then try and change the colour so that we don't change the colour of the one that we've already made. And we're going to go more into the sort of the brownie colours. That should do it. And then the outline colour we're going to change slightly as well. Let's make it more of a sort of grey colour. There we go. Right. So we do the bottom step first. There we go, and then we're going to do the next one, and then the top step. Top step. There we go. So there is my um, doorway and steps in Barnet, as per the story. So next one we're going to do is my shop. So I'm going to do a new background, which is going to be called shop. And I'm going to very quickly design this one. So I'm going to do again a nice fill background colour for the background of the shop. I'm going to go for more of a sort of grey colour for this one. And I'm going to use the shape tool. There we go. And then we have the, um, if I show you what I'm looking at at the moment, I've got the shop here, which is what I'm drawing at the moment, just over here. And I'm about to add the, um, the, table area that's being used here with the till on top of it so that's what I'm going to be doing next in fact before I do that I'll do the the jars behind because they would make more sense first so the jars I'm going to go I'm going to keep that gray color the same um, but my fill is going to be more of a white color whoops I did it again I keep forgetting <laughs> I need to deselect and then do my change of color there we go. Right, so we're going to do the jars over here. Let's add those in. And what I might well do in a minute is just... I've got that one selected. I can do a copy and paste. And it will make a second one for me. Look at that. And then I can make sure they're all the same size and just line them up. So I'm holding Control and pressing C and then V on my keyboard to do the copy and paste, by the way. And... Control V to paste again. There's another one. Let's give a bit of space between the jars above and below. There's another one. Control V. There we go. There's my little jars in my shop, and I'm going to use the paint brush just to add some stuff inside the jars. Um, so they can all be all sorts of different things. They might have like different sweets in one of them. So I'm put just a suggestion of that. Obviously, if I had longer, I would do loads of different things in the jars. But I don't have a great deal of time, so I don't want you to spend ages watching me fill my jars with different sweets. So I'll just do a couple, and you get the idea of what how you would do it. So you get the idea of adding different sweets into the jars there. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shape tool again, and I'm going to get. A brown because I'm going to be doing the um, the area that the shopkeeper is going to be standing behind like the desk so I'm going to add that in there 
Again, it doesn't matter too much if it disappears off the sides because it's going to be a bigger picture, that's fine. And I'm going to add, on top of that, is my till. So I'm going to do a paintbrush for this and I'm going to add my... my sorry if you can hear my dogs barking, my till. There we go, oops, fill the line in. And we can colour that in using the paint bucket. There we go. And, oh, there we go. And we're going to add just on top. Let's do, again, make a little bit lighter colour. You sort of suggestion that it would have the number sort of popping up at the top here with the price. Hopefully that kind of looks a little bit like a till. doesn't really matter too much if it doesn't. Obviously, you can spend longer on this and make it look really fantastic. I've had to do it quite quickly. So that's my sort of suggestion of a till. <laughs> Let's fill those holes in. There we go. So there's my till. Oops. And my little shop. Um, there we go. And my last one is going to be my cityscape, my background. So um, obviously, you, there are some pre-designed ones. So you can choose different ones. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look and see if there's anything that's suitable for what we want. So we want like a a cityscape, which none of these are quite right. Let's go outdoors, see if there's anything in there. So we've got a city there, but it's not quite the right kind of city for what we want. Obviously, you could even go on the internet and find pictures and save them. That night city might be suitable once it loads. Let's wait and see what that one looks like. Yeah, that will do for our London city. Um, you can design these yourself. They're quite nice to, de to design as well. So I'm going to go for that night city for my, my London city. So just wait for that to appear. There we go. And there's my London. So it looks a little bit more modern than, than I would probably have designed. But just for ease of, of quick, I've gone for, for that one. So there we have our backdrops for our story. Fantastic. Okay, so now we can start to tell the story itself. So um, over here on the visualizer, I'm going to get my um, storyboard up. There it is. And I'm going to start to plan what happens. So the first thing I need, the Barnet House doorstop with Oliver and the narrator. So that's what we're going to be doing first. So I'll show you how to show and hide the different bits as we go along and we start to add some code into this as well. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So we're going to jump back over into the um, Scratch environment. I'll just wait for it to jump back in. There we go. And we're going to go to the code session this time. So we're going to go to the code section. And the backdrop we want, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to just do one bit of coding on the background to start with, because we can control which background is going to be appearing to start with. So we're going to use the events section. And you're going to add the when green flag is clicked. And then you're going to use the look section and you can choose which backdrop you need to start with. So switch to backdrop two and then you can drag that in and you can change it to the one that it should be starting with. So in my case, the first backdrop should be the doorstep. There we go. So if I wait for that to appear, it won't appear yet because I need to press the green flag. But when I press the green, green flag, it swaps to that background, which is um, Oliver will be sitting on the steps to the house in Barnet. Then I'm going to go over onto my different characters. Now, at the moment, we want to show and hide the ones that should be um, visible and the ones that should be invisible. So at this stage, if I click on Oliver, you'll notice that the um, instructions that we've written so far have disappeared because they're contained on the stage. If I click on the stage again, you can see there they are. So don't worry if they disappear. So on Oliver, we are going to use that same control, so the same event, which is when the green flag is clicked. And we're going to make him appear. So we're going to go to looks and we're going to have the one that just says show. That means that he will be visible. And we're going to use a very similar one on our narrator as well. So we can actually drag that and drop it on top of the narrator and use exactly the same instructions on him. And Dodger, we're going to use the same instruction for the first block. So we're going to use the when green flag is clicked. So that's in the events section. There we go. And we're going to use in the look section, the one that says hide because we don't want to see dodger just yet okay so now when we press the green flag 
we can see that Dodge has disappeared, but we've got our narrator and Oliver. But at the moment, the narrator is on top of the Oliver character. So we need to do a bit of sorting out of that. So we can move things. So let's drag things around and get things where they should be. So let's put the narrator on one side and put our Oliver character on the other side. So that will look a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so now we can start to tell the story a little bit because they're not on top of each other, so we can actually see what's going on. So the very first thing that happens, if we look at my dialogue planning, we can see that in the dialogue planning, the first thing is the narrator talking. So we've got the narrator talking here, and then we've got the dodger bit. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So let's go and start to add the first part of our story. So we're going to go to the look section still, and you're going to scroll up, and you're going to find the one that says say, and at the moment it will say say hello for, and it says two seconds. So we can choose how long it needs to stay on screen for. Now what I've done to make my life a little bit easier and to take, make this a bit quicker is I've added, I've already opened the Oliver Twist um, script so I can use the stuff I want straight from that. So I'm just going to copy the bit of text that I want to use. Obviously you could just type yours straight in if you want to. And I'm going to delete the hello and paste in, I'll just do a right click and paste to show you what I'm doing, um, and paste in that bit of story. But the, the two seconds isn't going to be long enough to read it, so I can make that a little bit longer. And now if I press the green flag, you can see that, ah, so what have I done wrong there? Who is saying that bit of information? Let's have another look, see if you can see what error I've made. Have you spotted my error? Yeah, I put it on Oliver accidentally. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that off and I'm going to drop it on top of the narrator like I showed you before. I can then delete it from here just by dragging it over here. And if I go back onto my narrator, I should now be able to join the pieces together in the right order. Oops, jumped around a bit too quickly there. Let's scroll down a little bit. There we go. So I want to have the say after the show. So sometimes you just need to disconnect things and connect them back up in the right order. Let's move that down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So now if I press the green flag, there we can see the narrator telling us the first part of the story. Okay, then we can have the next bit. So I'm not going to put this all in one great big long speech bubble because it will make it really difficult to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do several of them telling the story of what the of the of Oliver telling the story of the narrator whoops so I'm going to go back into my Oliver twist and I'm going to get the next bit of the story there we go so what you're going to need to do from now on is think a little bit about how long everything is on screen for you okay so once I've done this next bit I will have had eight seconds of story okay because I've got four seconds for this one and um, I'm going to do four seconds for the sec this next line and I'm going to put a full stop at the end. Um, so now if I press the green flag you can see he says it was um, early on the 17th morning when Oliver limped slowly upon a uh, little town of Barnet and then he read the next bit and then that disappears. At that point our narrator needs to disappear so we can go down to the hide because at that point our dodger needs to show. But between our hide and show, we need to put the length of time that the narrator is going to be on screen for. So how much, how long is he going to be on screen for? Let's quickly have a little look and just remind ourselves. We need to add four plus four. Very good. And that gives us eight. So we're going to put a, a um, delay of eight seconds between those two things happening. So to find that, if you go into the control section, at the very top of the control section, there is a wait, and then you can change the number of seconds. So we're gonna change that to eight seconds, and then it will make him show and appear on the screen. So let's try it. So press the green flag. We've got our story from the narrator. Then he hides and then our Dodger appears. Now, at the moment, Dodger doesn't appear in the right place, so we need to just drag him over so he's not in the wrong part of the screen. And that's about where we want him to appear, there we go. And then he's going to say his line. So we're gonna to go to the look section again, and we are going to grab the say hello for two seconds again, but we're gonna change the hello to the next part of the Oliver Twist story, which is Dodger's line, which is, hello, my Covey, what's the row? 
and let's get that. So we're going to copy that and paste that in. There we go. I think just two seconds is fine for that. And then at that point, he's going to hide and then we're going to have the narrator coming up again. So we're going to put in another hide. So we pop the hide in and we're going to swap over to the narrator. So we're going to use another wait in this section. How long was um, Dodger on screen for? He was on screen for two seconds. That's right. So we're going to put two seconds in the wait. And then we're going to show our narrator character. Oops, I've not passed it a bit too fast. Um, you can copy and paste the blocks as well if you want to. Um, but yeah, I quite like grabbing them from the side because I know what I'm doing then. Um, so wait and then show. And then obviously he would say his next line. So let's grab that. And his next line is, if we go back into my script, is a bit more about what the Artful Dodger looks like. So let's pop that in there and change the length of time it's on screen for. So it's on a bit longer. There we go. So let's see what that looks like now. So we've got, there he is, telling us our story to start with. There he is. There we go. Excellent. It's looking really good so far. So you get the idea of how you build up the story. OK, so that's what you're needing to be doing. Just taking your time, building up the story, using your storyboard and your um, speech planning to build it all up. Um, I'm not going to spend too much more time doing this bit for you because you can see what I'm doing and you can add the more add the detail in for yourself. Um, and it'd be quite boring and quite long for you to watch with me just slowly adding bits of text in. But you can see how I'm building up the story. But as I'm going along, I'm thinking about how long each bit of text appears on screen and making sure that the weight matches in our do um, other characters. So at this point, if I wanted then um, Oliver to say something, I'd have to add up everything that's happened so far. So before eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 seconds wait before Oliver could say something. OK, so you need to think about how long everything's happening and really plan it. It's like a timeline that you're planning as you're going through the story. Um, I'm going to give this an actual name. So I'm going to pop in Oliver Twist up here um, so I can save it and it will actually be saved in our projects. So you can actually have a look at this. If I click on share, if you fancy having a look at this yourself on the DSH Scratch, um, there we go, DSH Scratch story, um, sorry, the DS DSH Scratch Studio, then you can have a look at my story so far. There we go. So that gives you an idea of the first part of this. So I'm going to just jump back into my stuff and I can carry on with our Oliver Twist version. And I'm going to show you just a couple of ideas of things that you could do to extend this, because obviously I've not quite finished, but I, I'm aware that I haven't. Uh, I want to teach you a couple of extra things so you can have a go at doing some different bits and pieces. I'm going to jump back into my Oliver Twist. Just wait for it to load so I can go back in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a couple of ideas of extending it. So one of the things that, that we said I said I'd talk to you about is how to use um, some interaction with your um, reader. So I'm going to do that very quickly. And I'll also talk a bit about adding sound effects as well so that you could add them potentially to your story. So I'll just wait for it to reload. Apologies. It's, I guess I said earlier, my Internet is very slow today. So just wait for it to load. Here it comes. And it's just loading the project. I'm going to click on see inside, which will take me back inside the project. Be really interested to know what stories you're going to be creating in your Scratch stories. So if you do want to send us a screenshot of what you've been doing, I'll explain how to share that with us um, at the end of the workshop. So that, that'd be something that you could definitely get involved in if you want to. So um, later in the story, so when I um, got my original design of the, the using the script, the very last part of this episode 
sees um, the Artful Dodger giving the password to get into the, the, the den that um, uh, Fagin is living in. And his password is Plummy and Slam. So I quite like the idea that what the, the person watching the story could do is actually have a go at writing in the password to get into the den. So that's what I thought I would add as an extra bit to my story. So obviously this isn't going to be necessarily in the, quite the right order because obviously there's a little bit more that happens before we get to this point. But just to give you the idea of how this would work, um, I need to add one more weight so that it, this doesn't come up over the top of the narrator talking about the next section of the story. I need to put in a wait for four seconds because that's what I've used at this point. So let's pop in a four second wait in there. That's it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him asking a question. Now to ask a question, you're going to go to the sensing section. And I'm going to use the ask. And at the moment it says, what's your name and wait? So we can pop that in there. And what we want to say is instead of what's your name, it's going to say, uh, what's the password? And it waits. And at that point, we're going to use a broadcast. So we're going to broadcast a particular signal that tells the computer to swap to our London background, which is the point where we're going to then have the next part of the story, which happens, of course, in London. So we're going to broadcast. So we're going to go to the um, control section. And I think it's in the control section. I might be wrong. I might have to go further up. Um, da -da -da -da. No, it's in the, it's up in the uh, events section. So at the bottom of the events section, you're going to go to the broadcast. And instead of being message one, we're going to name that something appropriate. So instead of message one, let's call that password. OK, but we don't want it just to automatically broadcast the password, do we? No, we want to use an if statement. We want to check to make sure that the password is correct. So we're going to go to the control section for that and get an if. So we're going to use an if that checks to see if the password is correct. So if. We can use an operator for this. So we want one that says equal to. So we want to say something equal to something. Don't worry that it says 50 in that moment because we can get rid of that. So instead of saying 50, we want it to check that it says plummy and slam, which of course is um, the Artful Dodgers password. There we go, plummy and slam. And we're going to use from the sensing section we're going to collect the answer. So we're going to use this little uh, variable here that's automatically created for us called answer. So if the answer is equal to plummy and Sam, slam, sorry, it will broadcast password. In fact, we can make that even more specific, couldn't we? We could make it say password correct. That'd be even better. So you might want to add that as a new message instead and use password correct because it describes exactly what's going on. So if the password is correct, it's going to broadcast that it's correct. And if we go back to our backdrops, we could have it at that point switch to the background. So we can use a when I receive. So we're going to go to the events section and we're going to find the hat block that says when I receive password correct. But when the password is correct, it will swap automatically to it probably wouldn't be the actual the night city. It would be inside the den, I think, in actual facts. But I haven't got a background for that. For now, I'll just use the night city. So just to show you what it does. So let's try it out, shall we? So if I press the green flag, we go through that first part of the story that I've written. There we go. We can see the narrator, Charles Dickens, telling the story. Then we can see the bit with the Artful Dodger. And we jump back over to the narrator telling us again. And we can see that it's asked what's the password. So if I type in the correct password, which is plummy and slam. And I press enter. It changes to the background. But obviously that background would be inside the den to give you an idea of continuing the story. Other things that you might want to have a think about is adding things like sound effects. So at that point, when you swap to inside the den, you might want a, some sort of sound effect, like a door opening or something like that. So if I go to sounds, I can actually choose lots of different sounds. There's loads of different ones. So this one's that's built in um, that automatically makes a pop sound, but we don't want a pop sound. If I go into um, the search, choose a sound, I'm going to go and choose one that might be more of a sound of a, of a door opening or something like that. So I'm going to go to effects 
and I'm gonna choose hopefully a sound effect of a door opening that I can use at the relevant part of my story. Let's just wait for that to load. And can I see one that's quite the right sound? Door creak, there it is. It's always gonna be there, door creak. Wait for that to load in. Let's just, hopefully it'll appear in a minute. That should have jumped in. Let's just make sure I didn't quite go in quick enough. So let's try again, just make sure it's gone in this time. So I go to effects and I'm going to get door creak. So I can test it. Oh, that's perfect. So that's the one I want, definitely. There you go. Oh, it's added it twice. It's just being a bit slow. So I close, I'm gonna delete the extra one. I don't need that pop, so I could delete that as well if I wanted to. So then I can go back to my code and I can add just the instructions to make that sound play when it switches the background to the night, to the, well, it wouldn't be the night city, would it? It'd be the inside of um, Fagin's den. Um, so I'm gonna make it so that the sound plays at that point. So I go to sound and I can have that sound um, door creak and we should only until done should be fine because it's going to be fairly quickly okay so that's added the sound in as well the last thing that I did very quickly want to just give you an idea of if you wanted to add it is add some animation if you want to add some animation to your characters what you need to do is change the um, add some extra costumes to your characters so if I go to Oliver what I could do is I could experiment with adding extra costumes of him moving and so I'll have multiple costumes, each one with him moving a little bit um, in each one. And then I would use the the looks to swap between the different costumes and that would make it look like he's animated. So I'm not gonna quit, not gonna show you in detail on that because I haven't actually got time. So that's just the last couple of bits that you could add in if you want to add some more detail. Okay, so that is pretty much us done on Scratch Stories for today. I'm going to jump into the PowerPoint and just talk you through what we've done and what we've covered. Um, the last thing I would suggest doing is that you spend a bit of time sharing your work. Once you've finished and you've finished your design, spend some time sharing your work. They've got that extra worksheet, which is the peer story evaluation. Ask someone at home to evaluate your story. They might uh, give you some ideas of, of things that you could improve. Um, there are some different criteria already on the sheet that you could use to judge how good your story is. Um, and then what you can do is ask them to add some of their own as well. Okay, so have a go at doing that, do a bit of evaluation work. And once they've done that, you could then uh, use those comments to make improvements to your work. Okay, so that's what I would suggest doing once you've finished. So very well done. In this workshop, you've learned about adding and creating your own sprites. You, we looked very quickly at creating animations. We looked at adding sound effects. We used if statements to control how your sprites interact with each other. And we used a question to collect input from the reader of your story. Very, very well done. So that pretty much leaves the, me to um, sign off for today's workshop. As usual, I'm gonna go through a little bit of a sneaky peek on what we're going to be doing next time. So do feel free to um, stay tuned for that. As usual, I'm gonna jump onto the chat now. If you do have any questions for me, this is your moment to ask any questions. Um, I'll jump onto the chat and just say to you now, if you wanna add any questions in, you can do. So you'll see me just jumping into the chat. So let me jump into the DSH TV chat room and just say, uh, please add any, any comments. To, uh, sign off for today's Oops. workshop, as usual. There you go, there's me talking. Um, so please add any questions now. So if you've got any questions, do pop them into the chat um, and I'll quickly just talk you through what we're gonna be doing next time. So you might, any of you, those of you who are um, very um, good at spotting things might have noticed that I have an extra um, item behind me in my setup now. Uh, and that's be one of these lovely pianos. So the next session, we're going to be lo looking at sound. We're gonna be looking at how computers generate sound. Um, as usual, the first part is gonna be completely unplugged. You don't need to have anything special to do that. Um, 
just yourself and the willingness to learn. Um, but the second session, we're going to be using the Nintendo Labo kit um, and we're going to be using specifically the Labo piano to learn about how computers generate sound. So even if you don't have a switch and the Labo kit, you might want to just join me for part two and learn a little bit about sound and have a look at how the Nintendo Labo piano works, which is pretty cool. So that is what we're going to be doing next time around if you do want to join me. Okay, so I'll just have a look and see if we've got any comments or questions from today's session. Let me pop um, Totoro back up there. And I can see there aren't any questions in the chat. So I've, that leaves me just to sign off for today's workshop. So thank you very, very much for joining me today. I hope you've had fun and learned something new. If you've enjoyed this workshop, check out our YouTube channel for more follow along activities. If you've got any questions or feedback for me, you can email dsh at uki.org.uk. Now, we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, please feel free to share any images or videos using the hashtag computing at home on Twitter or on Facebook. And as I was saying earlier, I'd love to know what stories you've been creating. So please do feel free to send us a screenshot or two. And I'd love to be sharing them on our Twitter or on our Facebook page. Also, for those of you who love writing, Digital Schoolhouse have launched a creative writing competition, which you can find out more information about on our website. If you're the parent of a primary aged pupil and are interested in finding out about how Digital Schoolhouse can work with your child's school, you can find out more information about our programme on our website, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.